Okay, welcome to my live broadcast of Katmandu Face and Body Art. Um, this is going to be a place where you can actually ask me any and all questions relating to face and body art, and I will try to answer them as best as possible. I'm also going to, in the future, be doing demos for you live so that you can see how they're done. Sort of like Faba TV, only this is my own little thing that I have attached to my website. Now, if you notice, if you're on the website itself, there is down below, when I get done with my videos, that you'll be able to pull them up at any time. So if I have a tutorial, you'll be able to pull up those videos at any time and watch those tutorials over and over again. This is completely free for you. This is completely free to all my um, friends, customers, and uh, everybody else. So um, I know there's been some things in the past week that have gone on on Facebook. Um, I'm not going to answer any of those questions. Uh, this is about my business. This live feed is for my business page, and I'm staying neutral even though I've gone on either side of this whole situation. I'm going to stay neutral on my business uh, live feed. So please don't ask me any questions relating to anything AOB, and you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, so let's start off with a little fun and... Um, like I said, ask any questions you want in the chat box, whether it's on this side, this side, down below, up above, don't know where you have it, if you have it popped out and it's all over the place, that's fine, doesn't matter. So, um, oh, and this live feed is brought to you by Mountain Lightning. Just like Mountain Dew, just not as good. Um, it's cheaper, 84 cents at Walmart. I keep like 10 of these in my fridge uh, at all times. So let me see. Uh, I have one question here from Sergeant Major. What are your views on copying a design you have seen on the web regarding copyright? Well, um, when I started off, when I first started face and body painting, I was actually doing it in Helen, Georgia. I didn't have any of my own designs. Um, I did have a book of a whole bunch of everybody else's designs uh, that I, you know, copied their pictures, printed them out on paper, had them in there. Now, I did tell everybody that saw these pictures, I said, I can do that, but these are not my, you know, paintings. You know, I mean, what else am I supposed to tell them? I can't tell them that they're mine. That is a copyright issue. But as far as copying somebody else's work, as long as you make it your own and then post up your photo of your stuff, there's no copyright laws in effect. In fact, um, copyright laws for art, as long as 10% of it is changed, it's your own art. Now, there are some other legalities involved with like Disney and everything else that you know really like to go out there and push the issue, and it's really stupid that they do that. Hold on, my voice is a little raspy. <laughs> Tickles. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Yeah. Max, quit burping. Oh. <clears throat> so, as far as the um, copyright issues involved, um, as long as somebody's not directly copying your own work or taking your photos and posting them up as your own, I don't see a problem with copying somebody's work as long as they did it themselves. Okay, Leo, fine, here. Go over there. Uh, <coughs> he loves being tossed around. Um, yes, if you're going to use somebody else's photo as a reference... I don't see that as a problem as long as you let them know that this is not your work, but you know, you're practicing, you're learning, you're expanding yourself, and you wanted to try something new, so you wanted to do it yourself and you use another person's photo as a reference. I don't see that as a problem. Nick Wolf would tell you the same thing. I mean, um, he loves having his work, you know, copied and everything else. They don't have a problem with that. Um, Oh, if you're on Facebook trying to message me or something, um, since I'm doing the live feed, I've turned my chat off. So, uh, 
Let me see. Nugget? What the heck? So, uh, let me see. I'll a I'll answer that one later. That's a that's a issue for another time. So, um, hey, what's up, John Place? Uh, thank you for um, commenting on that one post on the Fabiac forum. Uh, I really appreciate that. So, um, I don't know. Uh, as far as the copyright thing, I guess I covered that. If do you have any more questions on the copyright? That's bad. I'm putting that out. I know. I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> First show and already I'm doing something bad. Okay. Um, no. Uh, disregard that. Unfortunately, I can't edit it. So it's just going to happen. Um, <laughs> smoking bad. Don't do it. No. Wrong. No smoking. Bad. My dog even hates it. You should see the face he gets, and then he wags his tail, and he thinks I'm playing with him. <laughs> right, Max? Hold on. Let me see if I can get Max up here. Show you. Come here. Come here, Max. Come here. Oh, oh, I got you. Oh. He's a little puppy. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Say hi, Max. Say hi. Say hi. What? You don't want to say hi? You're a good boy. He's definitely not a lap dog anymore. <laughs> so, um, let me see. What else can I talk about? Um, well, I've already gone into how I've gotten started and everything else. You can check that out on my YouTube channel. Um, very easy. If you're from my web, if you're on my website, you just go to the top, and you'll see uh, the little um, whichever side it's on. I hate cameras. I think if I'm looking at it from the correct side, it would be over here, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everything. Um, you can take a look at a lot of my videos there. I do have a playlist of 72 different tutorials. So the tutorials that I put on here are going to um, be brand new ones. Like I say, I do a lot of spontaneous things. Um, I was supposed to do a tutorial for a group. But because of that group's attitude, I decided to just back out of that group altogether. So I'm not uh, doing that tutorial now. So um, who is your biggest influence, Margie? Hmm. My biggest influence, I would have to say, is Craig Tracy. Um, I've always loved his work. When I was in New Orleans, uh, about... I would say back in 2008 is when I actually got to meet him in person at his gallery before he actually started traveling around a lot and having his brother uh, take over the gallery for him uh, while he was doing his traveling. And in there he sold a piece of his artwork to a lady who remembered him, you know, when he was, you know, drawing pictures in the French Quarter. So I just love the way he works. He inspired me in a lot of different things. He motivated me to keep going, to do more with it and stuff. Unfortunately, I didn't do as much as I should have when I left the gallery. But now that I'm on my own and I have my own, you know, strictly my own business, doing my own thing, doing more body art and um, doing other things, I have more time to look back on that. Other influences I have are, you know, Nick and Brian Wolf, um, Mark Reed. Alex Hansen, Jay Bautista, Margie Nugent. Um, in fact, everybody that I meet is an influence for me. Why? They say I'm really good at what I do. Maybe. But here's the whole thing. You're still going to learn from everybody you're around. Even some of the worst painters in the world you can learn stuff from. You can take technique, you can take ideas from and elaborate on them. You can be an influence to those not so great face painters out there. You can be an influence for the people who are way above your skill set. I mean, Nick still learns from people. Alex Hansen still learns from the different people he's around. 
Jay Bautista, Pass Sure, they all take something from all these different artists they meet. They may be better than them or they may be worse than them, but everybody takes away something. So I would actually have to say that my biggest influence in this is you. You guys are my biggest influence because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing what I do today. Ah. Uh. Where do you buy your paints and supplies? Actually, I Google. <laughs> I've been buying my sponges, actually. I bought them from um, Karen Mercer at the face paint uh, shop. And um, I liked them because they were, they were half moons. Uh, hold on a second. This is my whole kit. Everything in this one backpack. So... Let me, uh, wrong pocket, let me pull out my sponges real quick so I can show you. All right, oh, they need to be cleaned. All right. Some of them still have paint on them and stuff. I need to clean them up. I just had them out the other day. So this is the type of sponge that I use. It's a half round, half circle flat on one side rounded on the other nice crisp angles and I buy these uh, you can get them from Karen Mercer you can get them from Silly Farm um, get them from Chameleon Paint uh, online store I mean a lot of people carry these now they also have you know the pedals and everything else um, this Kabuki brush I bought from uh, Lamari two years ago at Lafette and I tell you what I love these things. I lost my other one. I don't know where it's at. Somewhere in the junk in my house. I will find it. But this sucker is incredible. You use less water, less paint, and you cover more with it. Um, my brushes, I use strictly uh, Simply Simmons brushes, but I did go out and uh, make Mark a little bit happy. I did buy a couple of his brushes, and I've been using them quite a bit, but if you see, yeah, I've got quite a few variety. I just throw them in here nice and flat so they keep the bristles as much as possible. Um, I was missing a number six, so I bought this uh, last year. I think it was at, um, no, I bought it this year. I got it at the East Coast Convention, the Low Cornell. Or no, it was a uh, Fabaic last year. Okay, then I bought a couple of uh, Mark Reed brushes, and these I bought. No, actually, I take that back. I got all of these at um, Capital Kidvention in Washington D.C. If you haven't gone, you need to go. I mean, it's a great place to go. You know, I use Filbert and everything. I got all these brushes, but no, I don't put them all out. I only put out the ones I actually use. So. What is your favorite brand of paints? Hold on, there's one up above. Um, Karen from Ireland said, just did my first body painting today. What's your best tip for beginners? Paint. Just do it. Uh, pretend that the body is a larger face. Uh, just use larger brushes um, just as in the face you want to know how the facial features work so that when you're painting them they work right you want to do the same thing for the body um, unless you're doing like landscapes and stuff then try to use what's on the body I mean um, if they haven't shaved use their happy trail is something you know um, the definitions of the muscles you know try to play with the features and everything but the biggest tip I could give you as being a beginner uh, body painter is just paint. The more you paint, the more you're going to do, the more um, you're going to go with. I mean, if you're doing something like um, scale work, make sure you have that highlight and shadow in there so that it really pops it off and gives it that three dimension. You know, same thing with armor. Make sure that you, you know you put it where 
armor would be on the body if you're, you know, corsets, everything. Just try to, you know, just paint. <laughs> That's the best thing I can say. Um, have I ever tried to cut my own sponges? Yes, I have tried to cut my own sponges. And they look like crap. I don't like it. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't be using that word. Mm. No cussing, kids. None. No cussing. Not even in business. Don't even use the word frack or, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, no. Um, I have tried uh, cutting my own sponges. It makes a big mess in my house. I would rather buy my sponges, wash them each time I use them, or, you know, make sure that they're clean before going out. I, I like having the half circles for the simple fact is I can do most of my painting with the sponge and then just come back with the brush and do some details. You know, a uh, little feathering here and there. But uh, I like having a nice crisp edge on my sponges so that I can do all my stuff with that sponge and on the base and then just go back with the details. Um, what is your favorite brand of paint? Uh, my favorite brand of paint changes from one second to the other, but I can definitely give a great plug for Chameleon Body Paints right now. Um, ever since I started using it, I actually bought um, 10 different ones uh, at Capital Convention from uh, Barbara Lynch Sheeler. Um, now there's other people that are selling them, like Karen Mercer and some other people. <coughs> okay, got that out of the way. Um, chameleon body paints I like because they're actually glycerin based they're not wax based but you will find out they're just like um, wolf diamond effects tag um, phasmataz and stuff by having that glycerin base instead of the wax base it allows it to blend so easily and smoothly even once it's dry it still has the ability to lift the paint and blend it's incredible um, if you have it, try it for yourself. Find somebody who has it. Go out and buy two colors. I mean, if that's all you have, uh, if that's all the money you have, uh, just do it. I mean, um, try Chameleon Paints. You'll like them. Other than that, I like Tag. I like Wolf. I like Fab. I like Stazaru as a last resort. I like Paradise. I don't use it as much. Krylin, I used to use only for bases. Um, but yeah, my favorite right now is Chameleon. And it'll change because... Maybe somebody else will come out with a better paint out there, and I'll like that one better. Um, but in having a favorite brand, it doesn't matter. Yes, I like to use this one more. But what if in that situation you don't have that brand of paint? You know, you can't get it at a store or something like that, so you have to get a lesser quality. My tip for you is no matter what your favorite brand of paint is, learn them all. Learn how to work with all of them. Learn how Wolf works with Snazaru. Learn how Snazaru works with Paradise. How Paradise works with Wolf. How Tag works with Wolf. Because even though they are similar, they're still a little chemically different. So you want to learn how to work all the paints together so that no matter what situation you're in, you won't have a problem and your work will still look fabulous. Okay, let me go down here. Um, that looks like an Oscar Madison paintbrush case. It is a Just Throw It Martin F. Weber Company case, if you can see that. I don't know. I don't know how good the quality is on your side. I am using a high-quality camera, so bear with me. <laughs> Yes, this is the free service that I'm using. It's not the paid service. If anybody wants to donate to me so that they can so that I can have better quality videos, you can just um, send me a donation to catmandufba at gmx.com through PayPal. I'll be happy to take your money. Um, <laughs> you don't have to though. I mean I'm not asking for your money. I don't want your money. Yeah, chipin.com works too, but you know. Um, Make sure you pack the nipple tape. Yes. If you don't have nipple tape, make sure you have um, 
medical tape. Lamari does this too. If you do the medical tape and you double it up just right, and then you use a cap, um, like a bottle cap or something, and um, cut around, you can make a perfect circular um, nipple cover out of medical tape, and it will take the paint easily, quickly, great. Uh, the other thing you could use is duct tape, but I wouldn't recommend it on hairy nipples. <laughs> Let me see. Yes, Margie, you do have my kabuki. That's where it went. You stole my kabuki from Connecticut. I knew you had it. It's all your fault. Jay was distracting me when you stole it. I knew it. Yes, it was you. <laughs> um, oh, um, one thing I will tell you about is... Um, since a convention that was supposed to be in the Asheville area has gotten pushed back to the November time, and this is all I'm going to say about it, I am starting up a kind of like Lafette convention in the Bristol area for next year. Um, I'm planning it around April 4th through the 6th, which is the first weekend in April. Um, I have a great hotel convention center in my area, and I want... The room is huge to have in, and I want to have it to where we can give classes, have jams, have the vendors in there, everybody have a good time. I have a Harley Davidson store that's right near me who may supply us with a couple of motorcycles so we can do some body paintings and take some photography against them. I have a great photographer out of the Morristown area who um, is really interested in helping out. Um, the hotel is really nice. The rooms are anywhere between um, $89 and $99 a night. Some of the suites, which are bigger, that can hold a whole family, are anywhere from about $119 to $149 a night. Now, uh, if you're thinking about trying to get the honeymoon suite, sorry, I've already got that as host. And um, I'm definitely taking a jacuzzi bath during that time because I know you guys are going to stress me out. But um, more details are coming up, and you can actually check that out. Um, there is a link to it on my Katmandu Face and Body Art business page on Facebook. Um, just click the little link up above uh, in my title on my website, and you can go straight there. If you're already uh, watching this from my Facebook page, uh, you can easily um, click on it from the main wall. Um, any other questions? How do you use your kabuki brush? Um, there's several different ways you can use it. The best way is to take, and I don't use a spray bottle, so I need to start using a spray bottle. So the best way to do it is to have your paint, have your kabuki brush, and have a spray bottle. Spray and get the paint wet. Take your dry kabuki brush not wet, a dry kabuki brush, and rub it in. If you don't have enough paint on it, squirt a little bit more into the paint and use the kabuki brush to pick it up. If you get your kabuki brush wet, it's going to get wet all the way down to the bottom, and it's not going to be good for anybody because you're going to have to clean it out, and it's going to go on very streaky, whereas if you do it more dry it's going to go on with a better uh, use. Um, I showed friends of mine that I could do pretty much my whole forearm completely with the kabuki brush before dipping it right back into the paint. So you can get a lot of coverage, very light coverage, so it's not caked on with a kabuki brush. It's really great to have. Yeah, I make a big mess with spray bottles too. That's why if you're using a spray bottle, you spray your paint enough to get the paint up to where it doesn't puddle in the paint itself. You don't want to keep water in the paint and just let it sit there. Um, it's not really helping. So just use your spray bottle to get the paint wet. You know, um, Get as much up with your sponge or your kabuki brush as possible to where it's not sitting in the paint itself. Um, that way you don't have a splatter effect either. Because um, when you spray it and then it splatters all over the place. 
you just wanting to spray the dry paint, not wet paint. Um, do you use a kabuki brush to cover large areas? Yes. Um, I do use it for the body, not the face. Um, it's hard to get in those cracks and crevices with the kabuki and do a um, perfect. I usually just, for the face, I use nothing but sponge and brush. Uh, kabuki, mainly for the rest of the body when you got to cover large areas and you have a time constraint. It's great for cutting out that time. So, um, yes, I wish I could come over to Ireland. Uh, once I find my birth certificate, I'll be able to get my passport. Until then, um, I've got to pay like $27 or something to the state of Florida so that I can get it. Um, that's why I couldn't run for presidency because I didn't have my birth certificate at the time, but, um, you know, things happen. But, uh, <laughs> yes, as soon as I get my passport, I have a um, bunch of places that I want to visit uh, in the next coming years. I want to be able to go to the Netherlands and visit uh, Eugenie Brill. Um, I want to get to Ireland. I want to get to England. I want to go back to Germany and visit some friends I have over there. I want to go to Australia and New Zealand and Thailand and Iraq and, you know, well, maybe not Iraq. Maybe Iran. I can do some black light body painting out there and say that they've already had a nuclear meltdown. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Um, so, uh, let's see. Beep, ding. Do you already have a design ready for Fabiac? Fabiac. Um, I'm not competing in anything. Um, I told everybody at Fabaic last year that asked if I was competing. Um, I don't want to have that over my head. You know, I don't want to be like last place or second place or third place or somewhere in the middle. Um, my work speaks for itself. If people like my work, if they want to ask me questions, if they want me to, you know, show them something, I'll do that. I'm not in it for the fame. Um, my business goes well on its own. I do do a lot of festivals and events, but as far as competitions, I'm not any better than anybody else. And I really feel that way. I learn a lot from people. I will help out in competitions like I did last year with Lori's piece. Um, and that was great. That was fun to help out with, but at no time will I ever actually compete myself. Um, I don't want to say I win first place. I don't want to hold that over anybody's head and say, yeah, I'm a first place winner. I'm better than you. That's childish to me. Um, if I'm ever to compete, it's just to have fun. It's not to do anything else. So no, when it comes to competitions like that, um, no, I, uh, I don't have any pieces ready for Fabaic. Um, I'm not competing at all. Um, I competed in uh, Marcella's little uh, quiz thing on her Fabaic forum, and that was fun. And you know, I won something, which was great. And I don't know where my girlfriend put it, but I have it around here somewhere. So, go figure. Um, no, so I don't have any designs ready. But uh, if you want to be painted and you're at Fabaic, come get me because I really don't do too many classes. I'm mostly running around taking photos. And if I have nothing to do, I love to paint. So, you know, if you want to be painted, come find me at Fabaic. I mean, I might be wearing a red and black tutu with a red wig and boobs. Breast. Um, these things. Um, I just do that for the fun of it at conventions and stuff like that. If you've seen the pictures, you'll know what I mean, especially last year when uh, Rebecca painted me up in the vendor room with my blonde hair. I was so cute. In fact, I got to get back her um, headband. I still have it. Uh, forgot to give it back to her. Um, who are your main clients? Uh, more corporate. <clears throat> right now, I really don't have any corporate clients. Um, I do a lot of birthday parties. I do a lot of local events in the area. <coughs> oh, hold on. <coughs> oh, gosh.
<sighs> Still tickles. Okay, bubbles going up the nose. Um, I don't really have any corporate clients. Uh, I did get hired out last year by uh, Mumford & Sons for a concert that they had in, here in Bristol, Virginia. Um, I thought that was fun, painting a whole bunch of mustaches on people, so you know uh, Z really uh, enjoyed that. Uh, if she was around, she would have really enjoyed it. Um, moobs, that's that's man boobs. I'm talking about girlies. Uh, you know, I got a 36 double stuff D bra, uh, so I don't have to pad it to make myself look big. But um, <laughs> that, that's that's for another live event. That, that I'll bring Catman Diva out one of these times and let you talk to her. Um, but let's see. All right, see you, Margie. Thanks for stopping by and talking with me. Um, I still got 29 minutes left in my live broadcast. So let me see. Um, any more questions? How do I market myself? Uh, mostly word of mouth, and I do, um, whenever I go to Walmart or something, uh, you know how they don't like solicitors. So what I do is I go and I paint myself, either whole face, half face, paint my girlfriend, we'll go in there, we'll do some shopping, and I'll take a whole stack of cards with me, and I'll have them in my hand. At no time do I just go up to a person and hand them out. Um, I go and I do my normal shopping, but we also walk around the whole Walmart whenever we do our shopping. So it turns into from a one-hour shopping event to like a three-hour shopping event because we're walking around the whole Walmart in and out every aisle. Um, when somebody says, oh, that's really cool, then I hand them a card, and I can talk to them at that time. It's not solicitation. They actually talk to me first. So I'm not like doing anything wrong. I also do it when I go out to eat, when I go uh, to visit somebody. Um, I just constantly try to go out and paint it as much. Um, I'm really not looking for, I would like to have some corporate jobs, some stuff that continues on. My area is still pretty new to the whole body art thing, so I'm trying to ease myself into it. So marketing is a little bit differently there. Now, I have had some conventions like this last one in Austin that I was at, and they are talking about their next one's going to be in Salt Lake City, Utah next year. And they're actually seriously thinking about having me come back because everybody loved having the face and body art there because they never really had it at their convention before, and they had a blast. They loved it. So, you know, I have other conventions that were there advertising theirs, talking about maybe hiring me to come out to Missouri and Tallahassee, Florida, and, you know, um, uh, West Virginia, uh, several different places. I mainly market myself with really nice business cards and my website, um, banners when I'm at events, and you know, um, everything else. I try to make it as appealing as possible to people. The more appealing it is, the more you have. If you've taken a look at my uh, website, you'll see that I tried to do everything that really appeals to a younger crowd, a younger adult crowd, the adults that are nowadays that like the same type of music that we do. So, you know, I'm trying to market it that way. Um, yes, the Biz Card Store. Talk to John Place. If you want some really great business cards, he's a great person to get your business cards from. Um, I would like to say I get mine from him, but I don't. But he does a really great job with business cards, with uh, flyers, banners, um, postcards, you name it, he can do it for you. Just contact him, and uh, he'll get you all set up. So, yeah. TheBizCardStore.com, as he put on his uh, chat room down there. Um, I am very, very, very limited in my budget. That is why I design all my business cards my banners, my website. The only thing I've paid for is hosting for my website 
which is a yearly thing of $150. Um, other than that, um, I try to do everything on my own as cheap as possible because I don't have the money yet to really go out there and get things. Now, if you want me to tell you where I get my cards from, you will have to private message me or email me later after this live broadcast. <coughs> but for now, I would strongly suggest going to the Biz Card Shop or Big Card Store and talking to John Place and ordering your cards through him. <coughs> Maybe he'll give you a good deal for me plugging this for you. Maybe like a 10% off your first order. <laughs> so... Um, other than that, let's see, I got eight viewers. This is definitely not a Faba TV live event. Um, I'm glad you guys are watching. Um, some of you are chatting. Uh, <laughs> maybe soon, maybe down the road, I'll get something like, you know, 2,000 people watching at the same time. Something like what Faba TV gets for their live events. But um, thank you guys for coming and watching me uh, ramble on. Um. Oh, John has an even better deal for you. So, if you give him a buzz, if you message him, he'll give you a great deal on your new business cards. He'll even help you design them. So, um, sort of like to hire a face painter flyer that he did. Really awesome. Great inspiration for mine, too. So, um, let me see. Was there any other? Do you use a poster design at events or a flip book or just ask what they want? Actually, what I'm using here is a touchscreen computer that I'm using in front of me to broadcast from. I usually have this at events that are two and three day events, something that I'm going to be out there for a long time all day with. Um, I use a touchscreen because it's more interactive, it's more fun. Now, here's the thing. You don't want everybody cramming up around your computer all at the same time, right? So I have a tablet that has the same face paintings that I have on my touchscreen. They all have prices next to them so that people can see them and they can tell me what they are. Um, I can pass out my tablet to customers and let them look at the other pictures that are there while they're waiting in line. Or I have a six-foot-tall um roll-up banner that has a QR code on it that takes them directly to my photos page of my Facebook business page. This allows them to take a look at all the different photos, all the different paintings I've had, and when they come up, they go, I want this one. How many people do not have a smartphone nowadays? Android, you know, iPhone. Who doesn't have one of these nowadays? If they don't, they're very poor, and then, you know, they're going to be looking at the computer screen anyways. Um, I used to take around uh, pictures and stuff. It just took up too much space and trying to figure out where to put them and this and that and have stand-up signs. And then something I wanted to change. And, you know, I mean, it cost me more money to print out or another picture or to draw up another picture on a piece of paper and slip it in here that can get messed up in the rain. I don't like that. If I want to change something, I want to be able to just add a price to it and stick it up on my wall. And that's what I do with my computer. Technology's there. I could afford to do it. Not everybody can, but touchscreen computers are getting a little cheaper nowadays. And you'll be able to, you know, probably go out and purchase one. Now, everybody's like, don't touch that. You're going to break it. It's a touchscreen computer. It's made to be touched. And the one I have is old. You can only use really two fingers on it, two, three fingers on it, and that's about it. Um, the ones nowadays, you could use all ten fingers on them. So if there's multiple people on your screen, that's fine. Now I can only have like one person at a time or else it really screws with the computer. But this is not for everybody. If you have a display that you like and you have, you know, eight by ten photos in there, you know, priced with a little color dot and stuff. There's several different ways you can do it. So, uh, let me see. 
How many faces can I paint in an hour? Um, depending, the most I painted in an hour was probably about 40 kids. Um, I was hired to do a job, and I had to rush through it as fast as possible. But I always tried to do quality along with it. Now, this is mainly like one-eye butterflies, a one-eye tiger that I do, one-eye Spider-Man. These are quick faces that I can just run through and stuff. Um, but typically... I do between about 10 to 12 faces an hour, whether they're full face or cheek or eye designs. Why? I'm in my business for the quality of the work, not for the quantity of the work. I like the money, but I like more money. And if I'm always knocking out faces left and right at $5 a face, I'm stressing myself out doing that. Just knocking them out, knocking them out, knocking them out. Out of a group of 100 people standing in line, about half of that will leave my line and go somewhere else because of the wait time. The other 50% will actually stand in line, talk to me, watch what I'm doing, be intrigued by it, and spend more money because they like the quality of my work. So they're going to spend the 10 15 20 $30 for some of my face paintings. They have no problem with it. In fact, I've had a lot of my customers stand up for me because of some idiots in the back of the line. Now, this doesn't work for everybody. Everybody, you know, wants to maximize how many faces they can do and get as much money as possible. That's not me. I'm in it for the quality of the work, not the quantity of the work. So, um, hope that answered it. Um, what is the average age of your clients? Anywhere between 8 and 25. <laughs> Let's see, average age. There really is no average age. I do I don't set up in a kids area at a festival or at an event. I always set up in the arts and crafts area. So I get adults, teenagers, little kids, um, little kids and their moms. My line is not, you know. You'll have some people complaining in the back of the line. Oh, this is for the kids and blah, blah, blah. The parents shouldn't be getting face painted. Then that person comes up. Can I get my face painted? I thought you just said it was for the kids, not for the adults. Now you want to get painted? Um, there really is no average age for uh, what I do. I It's straight across the board. Any age can get painted. We're all young at heart. We should all be able to have fun and be painted. I painted them as young as 86 years old, if you want to call that young. Um, so, uh, what else? Did I miss any questions? Do you wear a uniform for work other than the breasticles? <laughs> um I used to wear a tiger stripe faux fur pants with tail hanging out with a tiger stripe faux fur vest and paint myself up as a tiger and wore a black shirt underneath it. Um, nowadays I find I don't really have to do that too much. Um, I'm able to actually just go in jeans and a t-shirt with my logo on it. They're seeing my work and I really don't even have time to put on a face before even doing um, some paintings because as soon as I start, they're like, oh, that's so awesome. I want to get it done. And, you know, I'm painting them. And, you know, halfway through the day, they're like, uh, what's with your face? I said, I wasn't able to finish. So, um, yeah, I really don't wear a uniform or a costume anymore. Just, you know, I guess you would call it a uniform. Black T-shirt with my logo on it. And that's about it. Um, maybe a different shirt, you know, to show that I have merchandise to sell, um, on my website or on my Facebook page, which goes through my spread shirt. Um, trying to get that hooked up to my website right now. But, um, you know, I have different ones, uh, from the different works that I've done, sort of like gallery work that you can find, uh, in my spread shirt store on Facebook. So, uh. Check that out if you want. That's one way to, you know, supply me. You know, the shirts are cheap. I mean, I'm not getting much of a commission off of the sale of the shirts. Um, I just like to supply my great artwork for all you guys. So if you want to purchase something, I mean, 
I'd have to sell at least 100 t-shirts just to even make a small profit off of it. So, you know, enjoy my shirts. They're not that expensive, and you can change them up and get them on whatever you want. Change the color of them and stuff. Very customizable for you. Um. <laughs> Your youngest one was 92 years old. Well, you know what? Hey, if they still want to be painted at that age, do it. More power to them. <laughs> I think the hippest grandmother I ever seen was I was at this one event and it really stunk. I was down in Mint Hill, North Carolina, and they had their Mint Hill Madness there. And this was during the gas price hike where everything was like five dollars for gas and stuff. And they told us we were going to be the only face painter there besides another charity. Well, it ended up being that there were eight of us there. One who had been there since the beginning of, you know, their whole thing. And I didn't make any money. It was raining. They even um, closed it down. And a rain or shine event, they closed down the first day because of rain. So the second day, it was raining a little bit. And this little girl, not more than maybe two and a half years old, comes up. And Grandma's like, you want to get your face painted? She's like, yeah. She goes, okay, pick out whatever you want to get. And the little girl pointed to the scariest face I had on my board. <laughs> it had teeth and the eyes painted on the eyelids and the teeth painted on the mouth. And, you know, it was really creepy and everything. And Grandma goes, jump up in the chair and get it. So I painted this on the little girl, and she just loved it. Grandma died laughing, having a great time with her. And I just wanted to give her an award saying, best grandmother for allowing this child, even at that age, to get what she wanted and not make the decision for her and stuff. Little girl, it's kind of funny watching her walk around because she's got a grandma in one hand and she's kind of stumbling around because she has her eyes closed so she can show them off to everybody and just freak people out. So, you know, things like that. I mean, from the youngest little kid... And here's probably another question that I know comes up a lot, and it's not in the chat room, but I'm going to tell it to you anyways. Um, what's the age range for body painting? Well, think about it. If you're a male, there is no age range. You just have to make sure that certain parts are covered with shorts for a male. Okay? Everything else is fair game. It's just... Skin, it's canvas. You can paint it. I've done mother-son shoots where they were covered, and we painted both of them up, and we took photos, and they turned out really great. Everybody loved them. You know, when it comes to girls, there is a certain age where you stop or you have to have them covered in order to paint them. You know? I mean, once they become legal at the age of 18 and older, which 18 is still questionable to some people, but once they're 18, they still need to be covered before then. And stuff. Little girls up to about the age of eight, before they hit puberty and before they start developing things, they look like a boy. They're painted like boys. You see the pictures on other people's walls all the time. The whole thing with painting a person is don't turn it into something that it's not. This is nothing more than a canvas. This is a person whose skin you are using to create art on. Whenever I paint a person, I am so oblivious to the things that are around me and the actual person themselves. I'm focused on where that brush is at, what the design is. I'm not thinking about anything sexual. I'm not thinking about the person whatsoever. Well, kind of. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking about the person and where I have to place my hands in order to move the person. Because I made that mistake a couple times, and because I wasn't thinking, I accidentally grabbed and twisted, and they're like, uh -huh, and then I'm like, Oops. But really, there is no actual age restriction for body painting. Some people will say there is. Some people will, you know, make it out to be something that it's not. Me, as long as the parents are there, as long as there is an adult guardian who is there, I would not suggest painting a child, you know, a child's body by yourself, whether you're male or female. Never, ever, ever. Unless it's your own child. I mean, that's just a given. But 
just be careful when you do do body paintings and on little kids because you can really screw yourself up if you do it wrong. Just make sure you use common sense whenever you do it. So, any other questions? It ended with a smiley face. <laughs> Let me just go through just in case um, there's anything else that I missed. Oh yeah, John, you have just, you've upped yourself from being Joanne to Jonathan the Great with uh, painting. I've, I've tracked your work and you're just unbelievable. You, you pick up really quick and also being a part of Silly Farm doesn't hurt when you have all that product there too. So what's the best tip you can offer? Mm, kind of a pointy round tip on the end of the brush. I mean, that way you can, you know, really drag out the lines for a long time, long, thin lines. Um, uh, as far as the best tip you can off, I can offer. Um, quit the drama. Get along with everybody. Um, if somebody stole your business at a festival, there's like probably five or six others in the area that you can do instead. Um, don't let things get to you. Uh, don't make accusations without having proof. Um, just learn to get along with people because the worst thing in life is to be in our community and argue over who's better or who has the lower prices or you know this and that and everything else don't go out spreading bad word about somebody just because you don't like them there are people I don't like and I still send them business why first of all I'm probably not available at the time or I'm not in the area at the time so to deny them business just because you don't like them is stupid um, Get rid of the ego. Uh, be humble. If somebody says your work is great, don't go into it like, yeah, I know, my work's a heck of a lot better than that stupid face painter down the street. That's stupid. Don't do that. Um, be humble. I'm, I'm always improving upon my work. So what I what people think is great now, I think is stupid. It, it's not the best quality. I'm, I'm never impressed as an artist. I can always be better. I always see that one little problem that I can fix. But once it's done, it's done. And people are like, oh, that's so great. It's like, okay, here's my business card. Call me for a party. If I'm that great, don't just say it and not do anything about it. But, you know, <coughs> what are you going to color your hair as next? Um, I'm keeping it blonde for a while. I'm probably going to let it come out and then maybe I'll make it grow out long and I'll have all this blonde hair. I'll probably uh, do like a pink fade. <laughs> what do you think? Pink fading up to blonde and then to brown on the top and stuff. Or maybe I'll do like a rainbow fade in, you know, just the blonde areas. I don't know. Uh, Maybe I'll just cut it all off and, you know, have a nice fresh canvas for Fabaic. People can just paint here on my head instead. You know. Ugh. Well, hi, Avon. I didn't know you were a blue angel. <laughs> well, thanks, Sergeant Major. Is... Is that your is that your title? Do we have a name that goes behind it? <laughs> Do you just go by Sergeant Major? Oh, okay. Face New Zealand. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by. And I got about five and a half minutes left. Quick, tell me what you want to know. Ask me a question. Quick, quick, quick. I got five minutes left. Ah! <laughs> Emma.
Yes, I just hit 11 viewers. I should stay for another two hours. Maybe I'll take a five-minute break and start back up um, after this hour is over with. Um, if you guys want that. If not, uh, let me know in the comments below. How many of you want me to uh, continue on with this after taking a five-minute break? Because um, this is starting to run through me. Uh, and I need to do my bad habit. So if you want me to continue on say at um, 805 post it down below yes for continue no for don't <laughs> so three no's Four no's. Okay. So, I'm going to end this in less than uh, four minutes. And um, I'm just going to say thank you guys for coming by here. Um, if you didn't get to see it from the beginning, you will be able to. As soon as I'm done recording, it's going to process the video, and you're going to be able to watch the video at your leisure at any time. Um, thank you for stopping by. Um, I'll try to work on something for next week. Um, next Wednesday at 7 p.m. I'll see if I can do a tutorial for you guys. Um, uh, go to my uh, business page and I'll ask a question on my business page. What tutorial do you want me to do for next week's uh, live broadcast? But um, other than that, uh, if you have any more questions that have to do with the community uh, about anything in general, um, just go ahead and ask me. Uh, I have no problem giving out information. Um, I love this job. I'll never give it up for anything in the world. That's why I gave up my other jobs. <laughs> and, um, well, uh, what else should I say? Um, I love you. We're now up to 12 viewers <laughs> at the end. <laughs> um... Just, what is it, a shirt that was in the East Coast Convention two years ago? It said, no drama, just paint. Get rid of the drama, people. Uh, and remember, personal Facebook profiles and personal Facebook pages and groups are a place for people to vent. It is not how they are in real life. It is not how they are in all their videos. Just because I have something to say and I rant about it in a video or I rant about it online or it may offend you, which nothing in life should ever offend you except for the way um, people are mistreated. If it harms you physically, then yes, it should offend you. If it harms anybody around you, you know, in a physical way, um, then it should offend you. But if it does not, it's not worth getting upset about. Okay? I have my views. You have your views. And I just want to leave it at that. Don't take what you see online as what the person is because you cannot read tone. Something somebody writes can be misconstrued a hundred thousand different ways. Just remember, before you pass judgment on somebody else, make sure you're not in the wrong yourself. And um, until next Wednesday, have fun and keep painting. See you guys. Bye.